Jeremy Langmead, welcome to Show Studio. Um, I want to chat to you a little bit about Isabella Blow because you have a fabulous sort of working connection with Isabella because you gave her the job at the Sunday Times Star, which she became sort of, her, well, her styling there became so sort of so loved and acclaimed. Why why did you hire Isabella into that position? Um, well, I started at Style and um, it was called Style, but that was kind of where the style finish was the name really, mm -hmm. and and we had to start again. Um, and so we wanted to have a, a point of view. Um, being sort of a newspaper supplement and not a, a monthly magazine, we didn't have to have that sort of commercial cover appeal. So actually it gave us room to experiment and be a bit more fun with fashion. So I wanted to find someone who'd get style talked about, put us on the map, find new things, make it sort of drama, I suppose, add some drama to a newspaper magazine. And, um, and I have to say, it wasn't entirely my idea. It was, um, it was Amanda Harlock and Plum Sykes who both said, oh, you should talk to Izzy. Um, and so, um, and we'd featured her in, in style, um, wearing a, a splendid hat, of course. And so, <laughs> it was their ideas, and, and I approached Izzy, and it was just the right time for her because she wanted to add a sort of commercial mm. arm to what she was doing, um, and also sort of have a nice big mainstream channel for her work. And so, it suited both of us. And also, she needed an income, and, and you know, uh, Isabella Blow needed to earn money. And, and, and although lots of people dressed her and loved her and invited her to parties and hung out with her. Not many people employed her. Um, and so she was really excited, I think, to have this opportunity to have a, a proper grown-up job, mm. um, which she embraced wholeheartedly, yeah. What was she like to work with? Because you said before that she used to dress in the same way she styled. Tell me a bit about what it was like to see her in and around the office. Um, it was rather wonderful to see her in the office. You can imagine a newspaper office, um, uh, even more so perhaps back then, was full of, of middle-aged, slightly overweight men, um, bent over computers, I think possibly still smoking in those <laughs> days. Um, and, and then suddenly the, this, this sort of vision of, of, of mink antlers and Jeremy Scott gold lame <laughs> appeared um, and wandered through the entire newsroom in order to reach where we worked on the style desk. Um, but you know the, the, the great thing about Isabella is she had an amazing work ethic, but also she had actually no pretensions at all, um, and never really outwardly or, 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 or that I could see felt uncomfortable in whatever ever environment she was in. So she had no qualms at all about wandering through in her outfits, and she would very happily go and sit every lunchtime in the canteen, surrounded by inky, ink-covered printers, and always <laughs> always had the roast. Mm. which was always the worst soggy potatoes, the most pale grey <laughs> meat. But she happily chatted and, uh, uh, with anyone who was sitting at the long tables they had in the canteen. Mm. So she, she fitted in very well, very quickly. Mm. Um, and of course, overnight, those pages um, had her, her hallmark on them. Mm. And we had tiny, tiny budgets back then. I mean, minuscule, sort of Mars bar-sized budgets. <laughs> um, and yet she managed to persuade um, extraordinary photographers, you know, from David LaChapelle, etc., to, to do these huge, great, big, scenic stories for us that would have cost a fortune in production for almost nothing. Mm. Um, so, you know, suddenly we had, you know, LaChapelle photographing a story at Old Street Roundabout with, with Devon and Sophie Dahl and, and all these models, and these amazing pictures came in, and um, it, was, it was brilliant what she did so quickly and so professionally. Mm. You mentioned, you know, you could see her her impact on style straight away. Is, is there a real turning point? Could you was it practically overnight that style just became something completely new? I th for fashion, absolutely, because um, her pages were like no other pages. Mm. Um, and you know, most most newspaper magazines were perhaps doing you know uh, five best cardigans for under hundred pounds, <laughs> and then and then suddenly there was these sort of fantasy clothes, or there was a, a Mary Queen of Scots shoot. Um, I think she actually commissioned Natalie Massenet at the time, who was a stylist for her, so Natalie Massenet was shooting for us back then <laughs> under Izzy, Izzy's guidance. Um, so yes, it, it, it did change overnight, mm. um, and the stories, you know, suddenly people would turn to style, and of course they gave us amazing covers, because mm. being Izzy, hats were always an important part of, of, of the story, and to have these strong covers with these amazing models with strong makeup, amazing photography, extraordinary clothes, just had huge impact straight away. Mm. Um, and you know we had Colin McDowell doing the fashion criticism, so the two of them made a great pair that were great just very team. different to anyone else. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, That's amazing. Were there any highlights? You mentioned the Old Street Roundabout shoot. Is there any particular moments that you remember? Anything that arrived on your desk and you were particularly <laughs> or inspired by? Um, I think I think I think the Mary Queen of Scots shoot. She did an amazing shoot with um, Mario Testino on um, Freddie Windsor, um, Princess Michael of Kent's son. Um, and she sort of made him, I mean, he had lots of heavy makeup on, sort of ripped clothes, it was slightly sort of punk, slightly druggy look. 
um, to have sort of a young member of the royal family in those photographs uh, was extraordinary. But you know, she had amazing connections. She knew so many different people. Whether it was sort of um, in a in a grotty little part-time art gallery in Shoreditch, to to you know, going off and spending the weekend with with, with Prince and Princess Michael of Kent. And that that was her life. It was fingers in lots of different pies, sort mm. of visually and socially. Do you think that's why her work's so brilliant? Because it feels so authentic. It feels like the pages just they're just living her life in a way. I think it was authentic, but also she was authentic in the, in the way she always wanted to to um, find new things and show things in new ways. And I, I think it was her who said she was like a, a pig hunting for truffles, and that's what she was like <laughs> for, for the new and the interesting. And she hated the corporate. And I think that was what was so nice about her, her tenure at the Sunday Times. It was this huge, you know, Murdoch owned corporate newspaper meeting Isabella Blow who's the complete opposite and of, often it's those mashups that produce the most creativity. Um, so I think that's what worked, worked well and we had a strong team behind her of assistants and particularly Vera who was sort of the secretary on style who would keep an eye on the, uh, the budgets which wasn't Izzy's strong point but with guidance she always stuck to them more or less. Yeah that's, so, a, that's a surprise because yeah. Izzy's known you know a lot of what you see written about her and you touched on this before you said Izzy needed a job she needed to be paid mm. I think people mm. imagine her as this fabulous style icon sort of floating around town they don't think of the kind of the toil. Much more than that she's really nuts and bolts when she came into the office you know off came the hat and she sat there and she was on the phone and she was sitting with Vera going through budgets um, organizing extraordinary trips to all, all, all different places all over the world mm. to make this happen um, very strict with her team the assistants were sort of run like clockwork so actually she was she was a very good professional uh, businesswoman within that context um, which I think is often overlooked just because she, so. she wore wonderful clothes that people think that she was this flighty thing um, and there were elements of her that needed more grounding but actually no she was really you know gloves off she worked hard she was great thank you Jeremy pleasure not at all